ABC and on ESPN Radio. Witness the best hockey players on the planet as they face off for world domination on the ice. The World Cup of Hockey on ESPN. Eight teams packed with stars. Patrick Kane, Team USA. Sidney Crosby, Team Canada. Alex Ovechkin, Team Russia. Lead their countries in one of the most anticipated international tournaments in hockey. The World Cup of Hockey. The puck drop Saturday. The Right Time Podcast with Bomani Jones. Jimmy Garoppolo can take the pages 16 and up. Tom Brady need to find somewhere new. Okay, not that far, right? Maybe not that far. But you got to say this about Garoppolo. If I had not told you that that was Jimmy Garoppolo's first start in the NFL, would you have known? If Tom Brady had played the exact same game that Garoppolo played, we would be talking about another great performance for Tom Brady. The Right Time Podcast with Bomani Jones on iTunes or on the ESPN app. Time is now! now. It's our time! Let's go! This is your home for Notre Dame Sports. ESPN 1220. Pete Gerardo. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Bob Picosi. He becomes one of the top five offensive tackles in the NFL. David Bakhtiari has agreed to a four-year contract extension worth as much as $51.67 million with the Packers. He is in his fourth season in the league. Week two kicks off Thursday night with the New York Jets visit Buffalo. Coach Rex Ryan's bill scored only seven points in a season-opening loss to Baltimore two days ago. We clearly have to get better in a hurry, which is hard to do because you're not really not going to practice, really. It's, it's walkthroughs. And, oh, by the way, we're playing against even a better defense. So that's tough, but we got to find a way to get better, clearly. Buffalo wide receiver Sammy Watkins says his surgically repaired left foot feels fine. And he's ready to go on Thursday night against the Jets. The World Anti-Doping Agency confirmed today that a Russian cyber espionage group operator illegally gained access to Wattis' Anti-Doping Administration and Management System database through an IOC-created account for the Olympics in Rio. His first public comment since undergoing surgery on July 18th, Mets pitcher Matt Harvey concedes that his rehab is not going as quickly as he would like. As a do-it-yourselfer, you value craftsmanship. Same goes for cleaning. Quickie Bulldozer crafts expertly designed cleaning tools that simply get the job done. Quickie, real clean, made easy. Quickie Bulldozer products are available now at Lowe's and Lowe's.com. Well, dude, obviously you'd be better as the fuck of No. Would I be better for society? No. Don't miss Rosillo and Cano. Every weekday at noon on SEMO ESPN. This is a local sports center update from Southeast Missouri's ESPN Radio Network. I'm Eric Sean. This sports center update is brought to you by Bertrand Law Firm. Visit tradebertrand.com. The Cardinals and Cubs opened their three-game series at Bush, and there was nearly some history. Chicago pitcher Kyle Hendricks took a no-hitter into the ninth inning, but it was broken up by a Jeremy Hazelbaker solo home run. The Cubs won at 4-1. Cards finished with just that one hit. Mike Leak lost number 10 on the mound for St. Louis. Leak allowed four runs in six innings, including a pair of home runs. The Cards remain a half game behind the Mets in the race for the second wild card spot. Game two with the Cubs is tonight at 7-15. Jaime Garcia takes on right-hander Jason Hamill. Same old coach Jeff Fisher, same old Ram, who were shut out by the 49ers, 28-0. The Cardinals outscored the Rams. The SEMO football team has played its first two games on the road, but the Red Hawks will host Indiana State from the Missouri Valley Football Conference at Hawk Stadium Saturday night at 6 on Family Weekend. Southeast is 2-0 and under Coach Tom Dukowitz in home opener. The Red Hawks volleyball team is in action at home tonight at 6.30 against SIU Carbondale. The unbeaten Red Hawks soccer team starts a four-match road trip tomorrow at Kentucky. Get SportsCenter updates every hour on Southeast Missouri's ESPN 92.9 FM and 1220 AM. The conversation has been growing about Wings Etc. See, Wings Etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings Etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just 6 49 
plus wings, etc., has food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59-cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and wings, etc., is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. <laughs> and the whole community is excited about how wings, etc., is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess wings, etc., is a really big deal around here. And now, for ESPN Radio Network, local, local weather forecast. National Weather Service calling for sunshine about 88 today, tonight down to 67. A slight chance of rain tomorrow, tomorrow night with a high in the middle 80s. Small chance of rain on Thursday with a temperature about 84. Friday, about a 40% chance of afternoon storms. Then storms likely Friday night through Saturday into Sunday morning with a high of 81 degrees. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast right here on the ESPN radio network. For the Saturday morning express, catch it every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. On ESPN. This is a proud presentation of Mississippi River Radio Sports, the sports authority. And now, at last, it's time for the Red Hawks Coaches Show on the SEMO ESPN Radio Sports Network. I have more to tell you. The Southeast Coaches Show airs every Tuesday at noon on ESPN 92.9 FM and 1220 AM. Live from Wings, etc. in Cape and Jackson. This is your chance to delve deep, deep into the Red Hawks football season with head coach Tom Matukowicz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go live to Wings, etc. <laughs> right here on SEMO ESPN. Welcome in another Welcome edition in another of the edition. Red Hawks Coaches Show. We are at Wings, etc. We're in the Jackson location today. So if you are on your way to lunch, getting ready to make plans for lunch, why don't you stop by and join us? If you're familiar with Wings and Jackson, you walk in the front door, then take a quick right. We're back in the banquet room, and we've got a nice crowd, everybody ordering up their lunches. Uh, I see a lot of those award-winning jumbo wings. Wait a minute. What wings? What award? What are you talking about? Southeast Missourian People's Choice Award Best Wings in Southeast Missouri right here at Wings, etc. You can dine in or you carry out. We uh, would love for you to dine in with us today. And their menu is a lot more than just their award-winning wings. They've got burgers, wraps, subs, quesadillas. If you want to keep it light with an entree salad, they can help you out there. Smoked ribs, their appetizer lineup, including their ultimate nachos and their deep-fried pickle spears and the HD TVs all over the building, including the NFL Sunday ticket. Uh, you get to watch debacles like we saw in Los Angeles or in San Francisco last night from the uh, the former St. Louis Rams. You can watch all of the NFL games, college football as well. It's Wings, etc. We are in the Jackson location. We'll be back in Cape next week, so make plans to join us there. The Red Hawks football coach is here. Tom Matukowicz. We also have linebacker Kendall Donerson, who had a big game against us. Really, that's two years in a row. Donerson has had big games against SIU. And uh, let's welcome in Coach Took. Good to be back in Cape. And you know you're not going anywhere this weekend. Yeah, I think that's the, the best thing about it. it. It feels like we've been on the road forever. And, uh, you know, traditionally we've had some uh, good home wins and really looking forward and that's my message just this, this week is um you know if we want to do the kind of things we're we're wanting to do and what we're talking about we need to play well at home pressure on you you've got this perfect record now you're two and on family weekend you're two and oh in home openers so you're undefeated here in, in a couple of these games okay well i didn't know that but i know uh our our team's really excited to be at home uh they lifted at 6 30 this morning and there's a lot of energy and, and that, so i just really think Looking forward to a quality opponent at home. Uh, let, we'll get your thoughts here on the SIU game, a game where you were down by 18 points, 13 points in the fourth quarter with the ball on a potential game-tying drive there in the fourth quarter. Uh, and a fourth down, uh, a fourth and two, fourth and three came up short there, and SIU was able to run out the clock. Uh, final score in the game, 30-22. to 22. First of all, on the way over to Southern Illinois and Carbondale, Boy, it's not one of those trips where you've got to leave the day before. You got to do all the planning, the hotels. You got to line up meals and the whole forty-five minute bus ride. Yep, yep. That's that's one road trip that is easy to do. And you know, we talked about it, and I've talked about it everywhere. I mean, it's just football. Every game is going to come down to forty-six plays. Uh, you know, when all things are equal, I think when you look at both teams, I think you saw a fairly uh, equal. Um, 
both sides of the ball was pretty equal. And um, I, I think what happened um, right before half, you know, when they were able to, to get a, a touchdown, that two minute drive, um, when we fumbled, they scooped it for a touchdown. And then um, one of the, the double moves that they threw the ball over our head. And then the uh, holding call where we had about a 60, 70 yard run by Tremaine that got called back. The ball would have been at the three. And so uh, I think those were the four to six plays that ended up deciding the football game. Um, we knew it was going to be a fourth quarter game, and, and it was. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, it, it probably will be every every time we play just because that's a rival game. And it's turned into some pretty entertaining games here. What I think was interesting, their touchdown right before halftime, I don't know how it's physically possible. And I'm sure the, the clock keeper was absolutely on point here, but I don't know how it's physically possible to run 13 plays in one minute and 31 seconds. And I think they ran three plays in 14 seconds down there by the goal line. That's a, that's a lot of football in a small amount of time. Yeah, and, and they did a good job. I think uh, the one thing you saw on that drive is the missed tackles. You know, and that's that's one thing I'm going to really talk to the, the the team about today on defense is we got to tackle well. There are two balls that was thrown short in bounds that we miss those tackles. Well, when you make them, the clock runs, all right, or they have to eat their last time out. You know, one of the two, and and then we're out of that drive. And so um, that's going to be a, a huge emphasis. And of course, you got to give credit to them because those players broke those tackles and were able to get out of bounds and and uh, you know got those cheap cheap yardage on missed tackles difference between the memphis game and the siu game you got out quickly in this game i mean you went right down the field seven plays 14 yards uh this is after you stop them on fourth and one first of all how surprised were you that they went for it from their own 35 yard line on fourth and one i know they're trying to make a statement early nick hill's first game uh, as head coach in carbondale was that a surprise to you they went oh, for it on fourth down on their own 35 yeah and so, really, we consider that a turnover. I mean, it is. I mean, they'd have punted that like that's a turnover. They turned it over on downs in their their side of the field, and our defense was ready. And I think Kendall's the one that actually tackled him there and uh, came out. And uh, we had to kick a field goal. They jumped off sides on fourth and four, gave us a new set of downs, and we still had to settle for a field goal. So that's a real big uh, point of emphasis this week is situational football on offense. You know, when we get down first and seven from the seven, uh, first and 11, uh, or first and 10 from the 11, we got to score touchdowns. We can't settle for field goals. And it wasn't just the offensive fault to come back down to penalties and other things that as a football team, we got to address this week. Uh, you and I have talked uh, over the course of your three seasons here. You, you've always said, I don't want to be the least penalized yeah. team in the league or in the country because those teams aren't any good but you have been among the least penalized teams because you played with a lot of discipline. Was it surprising to you 14 penalties uh, in this game? Yeah, it sure was. And, um, you know, it, I think the ones that uh, disappoint you are the pre-snap uh, penalties, you know, whether you're offsides or you have a snap infraction, uh, late hits and personal fouls. Those are just, you know, you can't have those things. And, and I think we'll get that cleaned up because uh, we took care of that Sunday. You know, there's only you, you know they know better, and and so I'm not going to sit up in front of them and talk about how we can't make penalties. So we ran them, and we ran them until they got the point. Well, we'll ask so, Kendall. So up, Kendall, but, yeah. Kendall's probably hydrating right now. He's probably a little tired yesterday. That Kendall, we'll ask Kendall about the uh, the encouraging uh, conditioning uh, that happens after games like this, and then. Kind of going into the game, you really didn't know what to expect from their kicking game because they have a senior veteran kicker in Austin Johnson. Basically, they benched him. I mean, he was in the doghouse. Yeah. He had a field goal blocked. He missed an extra point. The coach was, uh, you know, that was the last straw for him. So they send a kid named Matt Sotoropoulos in there, yeah. and the kid ends up with three field goals. You really didn't know what to expect from their kicking game, and, and he came out and played well. Yeah, he really did. Um, I thought that would be an advantage of ours, but, uh, you know, next man up, and they did a good job of getting him ready, and that kid uh, executed those plays. And, and it was really kind of a draw because we had the same thing with Ryan. You know, McCrum had a great game. Uh, 
you know, all three field goals are right down the middle. They were never in question. And, and right now he's playing with a lot of confidence. That's the thing. Last year, uh, two years ago, uh, Ryan McCrum is an All-American, uh, four field goals of over 50 yards, just one of the best place kickers, not only in the conference, but in college football. Last year, nine of 16 in field goals. So he kind of took a step back, encouraging to see what he did on opening night. I mean, he, he was just rock solid. Yeah. Anybody that has never stood next to Ryan McCrum, He's 230 pounds. I mean, he's not a little tiny kicker. Yeah, he, he's uh, rocked up pretty good. He's an athlete. He's a soccer player and, and actually uh, played soccer all through high school. And so he, he wasn't even a football player in high school. So um, he's, he's a good athlete. And I think it's just like anything, you know, whether it's golf or any of that type of skill, you know, your mentality, your confidence, you know, you walk up to a putt, you know, most of the time it's done before you hit the but and uh, so same way it's done before he kicks it through there, you know, he has to have the confidence. And uh, right now uh, I, I really feel good about him and he's really locked in. Now, do you practice what you preach on the uh, on the uh, SEMO football golf tournament? Or are you step right up there and uh, right in the center of the cup? Uh, no. OK, no. I just wanted to get that out there with uh, with Kendall. I'm, I'm food and fellowship guy. At that, that, those yeah. things. Yeah. So the other two field goal drives that you had in the first uh, half of the football game, 16 plays, 72 yards, almost six and a half minutes, then a 14 play, 72 yard drive that went almost seven minutes. Those are good, long time eating type drives. I know you like that type of football. I know you like to own the time of position. You probably would have just liked to have punched those in when you go 14 and 16 plays, but you still finish with points. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the the, the thing. Our offense is almost there. Uh, we're running the football. We're having success at times. We haven't thrown the ball as well as we could. You know, a lot of people uh, will blame the quarterback, and the quarterback and the head coaches are the first two to blame, and, and we, we are to blame. And so we're going to get that fixed. Uh, we got to catch the football though, and we got to give Jesse a good pocket, and um, that's the emphasis this week of of let, let's try and fix this passing game. And it's not like we're going to go throw for five hundred, um, but just our percentage needs to be up, and then and and taking those shots, um, you know, we got to connect there. You know, anybody that looks at uh, Jesse Hoska's final numbers, seventeen of forty two, but if you were watching the game. There were a lot of his passes that hit receivers in hands that, that were pretty good throws. Yeah. So we had eight drops, uh, you know, so that's on, on the uh, wide out. And then we had two where they were covered and he threw it out of bounds, which, like I said, I think people and, and everybody that's emailing me stop about Dante. Okay. You know, Jesse's our guy. I feel very confident in him and, and just trust me that uh, we're going to get this thing rolling. And uh, you – Put the defense out there on the field uh, just before halftime, and they punch it in with uh, the guy, really, who's third string on their team, Jonathan Mixon, but he's the big bruising back down along the goal line. They've got little tiny guys in Daquan Awesome and Aaron Stanton. I mean, they're small guys, good runners. I mean, you know, they're rock solid. You know, they're really, they're really buffed up, but they're small individuals, so they bring the big back Mixon in, and you probably knew, hey, they're going to hand it to this guy and try to get him into the end zone. Yeah, that's I mean, they, they did a nice job. I was very surprised at their commitment to running the ball. Uh, you know, Nick was a quarterback. They opened it up, threw it 55 times against uh, FAU. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, they really changed that mentality and was committed to the run and, and, and at times moved the ball a little bit, running the football and shortened the game a little bit. So they did not actually ever lead – in the first half with time on the clock, never. I mean, they scored the touchdown with zero seconds on the clock. So they took a 10-9 lead into the halftime locker room. What was your uh, what was your message? You knew you were going to get the football first in the second half. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, everything that happened was self-inflicted. We just had to do a better job of, of uh, playing smarter. Uh, you know, and it started with uh, the opening kick. We get it. And, but it, it was tough because of how we, we let them score with the missed tackles and, and all that momentum, all that work that we had put in in the first and second quarter, you know, went right back to SIU once they were able to uh, punch it in that two-minute drill. So it's 10-9 at halftime. You come out in the second half. Uh, they are able to stop you, and then they put together a five-play, 72-yard drive. But uh, Connor Iwima, 
Uh, one of their big play receivers catches a 44-yard touchdown pass, and then all of a sudden the crowd, who really hadn't been real vocal, all of a sudden they're into the football game. Yeah, I mean, that was that was huge. That was one of those plays that, that we talked about. And you credit those guys because uh, he, you know, the guy threw a good ball and, and uh, he was open, and so uh, – that's what we got to try and take off the film is those big plays on on defense because really, you know, we played really good defense. You take three big plays out of it and and you feel really good about what it looked like. And then the only turnover of the game for either team uh, was a fumble from Will Young. He was stripped. You're your starting running back, and it's just a piece of bad luck. I mean, the ball pops literally. And the kid was standing there. The ball popped right into his hands. And he runs into the end zone, forty-seven yards. I mean, you you couldn't have you couldn't have you probably could have taken ten bounces. It would take you seven or eight of them to bounce it up into the guy's chest. Yeah. So I, you know, Will is such a, a hard runner, you know, and we just got to do a good job when he's you know in that pile and he's turning and burning that that you know he doesn't let that ball be at risk. You know, he's got to put two hands on it. Um, because he he tries so hard, he's going to get stripped a lot more than most backs because they go down quicker. And uh, so I think that was a great uh, lesson for him. And, um, you know, if, if you know Will like I know Will, that won't happen again. And Will Young, back-to-back, 100-yard rushing games. Boy, you, you have a commitment to running the football. You can only commit to it so much. If you have guys that aren't putting up yards, you, you can't yeah. really keep committing to it. Uh, but you've got a guy who's replacing an all-conference running back, back-to-back 100-yard games. So that's uh, that, that's pretty good to move an all-conference guy out to a new position slot receiver and have a guy step in and go over 100 twice in a row. Yeah, exactly right. And I think our offensive line uh, and tight ends, uh, again, did another job of opening some nice holes. And, and he also he was his BYOB, bring your own blockers, and he did that a couple times too in the secondary and, um, you know, uh, like I said, that, you know, if we can get this passing game to match our running game, I think uh, we're going to see more points on the board. You know, anybody that's been to either one of the games, they see a big guy running around in the backfield. He's lining up in the slot on the right, then he's moving over to the left side, number 47. Uh, Lloyd Lafili teammate, first three years at Southeast, he's a linebacker. And all of a sudden, here he is on almost every offensive snap for the Red Hawks. Tell us about that uh, and about what went into uh, Lloyd switching sides of the football. Well, you know, we, we lost Logan Larson, who's our starting tight end last year. Uh, you know, he didn't even start fall camp with a, a hip surgery. And so um, we just felt like uh, he's a senior. Um, he wasn't going to start at linebacker. And so we, we wanted to give him a, some kind of uh, role on this football team. And, and he's a big, thick, a uh, guy that, that has a lot of pop, and, and so we felt like it was a good fit. It started a little slow because he pulled his hamstring and testing, and so he missed the first two weeks of fall camp, and he's just now starting to come on there. He looks bigger than 247. I, I, yeah, I think he is. I think uh, he's in the 250s. I mean, he is a he's yoked up dude. How about the transition? He's a Samoan. You know, those guys yeah. just – I mean, they look at a burger and put on ten pounds. You could hear his family in the crowd from the other side yeah. of the field. Yes, they exactly were there. Right. They were. They were. They were excited to see him out there. What? How big of a transition is that for him? And did he play a little uh, a little offense when he was in high school? Uh, no, he he's been a defensive player. I think the thing that he can do is he can run and hit something, and so that's really that position. That's really linebacker, and so those things are are. Uh, showing up i think the other things were in the passing game and the protection stuff is where we're trying to get him going but it's a good place to start because he cares and he is a senior and he, he he's a big kid so as a coach that's what you want to work with do you occasionally get the little conversation you were coach weemers maybe throw me a pass coach maybe throw me a pass yeah we we did it twice and uh you know uh he dropped two of them i said the third one's on you john don't throw it again <laughs> <laughs> coach Weimer. so and actually we're developing him and he'll actually uh he may he may be able to uh, get his hands where he feel comfortable throwing the football good marquette murgock another guy that uh that we've seen him you guys have moved them around together on the same play marquette murdock not only a guy that blocks but he's a guy that can catch yep. the football yep and we need to target him a little more too because he's a big target he's got good hands and a lot of those times, uh, those tight ends are hard to cover because they're getting covered by a DB 
a smaller DB. And, and so I know uh, Coach Weimers, that's been a point of emphasis this week to try to get those guys the ball a little more. So they score on the fumble return, and then they add another field goal from Soteropolis, and then all of a sudden it's 27-9. to only a minute left in the third quarter. What's the message on the sideline before you receive that kickoff? I mean, the message is the same as it's always been, is, is you can't let the scoreboard dictate your attitude and effort. It's just like life, you know. We have this equation we talked about through this book we've been reading through uh, fall camp, you know, E plus R equals O, event, response, and outcome. You know, you can't control the event and you can't control the outcome. Really, the only thing in life you could control is your R, your response. And so uh, we can have a pity party on the sideline or we can get it going. And and we talk a lot about the fourth quarter. And, and so far this year, we're 26 and six in the fourth quarter as far as points. That tells you a lot about the character and the conditioning and the toughness of this team. And so we just kept kept plugging along and kept coaching, trying to get things fixed, and and uh, we got back in this game. Coach Tom Matukowicz, we're at Wings, et cetera, in Jackson. The Red Hawks coaches show Kendall Donerson, Red Hawks linebacker, going to join us coming up. Uh, and then you go on a, another drive, four plays, 73 yards. Jesse Hoskett hits Christian Wilkerson, and he gets in on the right edge of the end zone. Uh, you had really talked about Wilkerson, who redshirted last year, Big, strong, physical kid out of Memphis. Uh, I think he had five catches in the Memphis game, and he has his first collegiate touchdown, the first of probably many if he stays healthy. That was a really, really good moment for him. Yeah, it really was, and it was a great throw by Jesse, too. I mean, the guy was was covered and uh, put, put the ball in money, and he was strong at reception point. Uh, those are the kind of things that we need to continue to work on. And then uh, all of a sudden we see after uh, – Tremaine McCullough rips off a long run down the sideline. I think it gets you to the four or the three yard line. You, you get the penalty, so it nullifies that play. A little time after that, Tremaine McCullough leaves the game. Uh, this was with seven and a half minutes to go in the game. I mean, so he was not even on the field for the final seven and a half minutes. So you bring in Darius Darden Box. Red Hawk fans will recognize that name on the roster last year, had not been playing because of an injury. And I know you said before the game, he's not going to play. I mean, he hadn't been practicing much. And then all of a sudden, here comes Box in for McCullough. Not only does he come in, but he catches a touchdown, and it's a fabulous play. He's not a big guy, and he carries two Salukis about three yards and gets into the end zone. And if I remember right, do you remember the down and distance on that? I thought it was fourth and I think it was fourth, fourth and yeah. something like 12, 14 yard. It was a great play of Jesse extending the play. And then uh, box just kind of, you know, yard ball. He was kind of covered and, and just went away from his guy and they were able to connect. And then I think he was, uh, he caught it about the seven. And I mean, there was all kinds of, of uh, Saluki guys there and he kind of willed his way into the end zone. What does that tell us about Darius Darden Box for, for Red Hawk fans? Is, is this a guy potentially who could be an impact guy? Well, he is. Uh, you guys don't see him much, but he is a major contributor on special teams. He makes plays all the time, and as a coaching staff, uh, we're very appreciative of him, and he has impacted the game. I don't remember if uh, last year at Tennessee Tech, you know, when we blocked that punt uh, and scored a touchdown, that was Box. And so a lot of his plays, you know, aren't block punts. They're just a tackle or something. So maybe people don't know the value he adds to this team, but he, but he really does. The play was at the SIU 29, you're facing fourth and 16 when Hoskett hits box for the touchdown. And then all of a sudden you're thinking, we are in this game. It's a one-score football game. Yeah, and then we practice the four-minute drill all the time. So the uh, SIU has the ball with five minutes left. Um they're, we're down by one score, and defensively we got to stop them, and we did. So our offense took the ball uh, on, uh, I think it was on the 30-yard the line-ish with 2.50 left and two timeouts. Plenty of time. I mean, that's a that's a dream two-minute scenario that gave us that opportunity to, to uh, you know, win the football game, and it come down to uh, fourth and three, and uh, he was open. Uh, the protection broke down. And so Jesse had to had to throw on the move and uh, wasn't able to connect, and, and football game's over. Well, you almost got the first down on the 
play prior with yeah. a with a pass play rather than maybe curving the ball downfield for the sticks, get out of bounds and stop the clock, and you can understand that. Yeah, exactly. It was a long third down and uh, got it to a manageable fourth down and, and got out of the out of bounds. So there's still lots of room for improvement. We took a sack on two minute, which is which is bad football. That's like jumping off sides. That's like all the other stuff. Jesse, you can't take a sack. I don't care if we don't block a guy. Hit me in the forehead with a football. Like that can't happen because then I got to call a timeout and we're now behind the chains. Throw it out of bounds. We're still at, at third and ten and and we're good to go. So lots of teachable moments. Um, you know the staff and and couldn't wait to get in uh, on Monday to coach this football team and um, you know we're excited. Like Burt Reynolds in the longest yard when uh, you know Jaws was coming at him and uh, he needed to get rid of the ball. I think he. I think he broke my freaking nose. He threw yeah, the ball. Exactly. The ball. I thought he hit him in the privates. Was yeah. That well, right? yeah. I just uh, tried to clean it up for you know family yeah. show. If I'm doing any, hit me in the head. <laughs> so uh, the one thing I will say about Jesse Hoskett, uh, boy, he's tough to bring down. Coach, he's big, uh, and he's got a really powerful arm. Now I know you're still wanting to see maybe a few more things when you really take the ball downfield. When he plants, or even when he's on the move and he unloads a pass. Boy, he really has a lot of arm strength. Yeah, I mean, I I, I love Jesse. I, he is going to be a really, really good quarterback, and it's our job to get him there because he he he's smart. He tries hard. He you know he's talented, you know. But if a wideout's supposed to run an out route at twelve yards, he runs it at eight. That ain't the quarterback's fault. Yeah. If he's running for his life, that ain't the quarterback's fault. If it's third and five, we jump off sides. Now it's third and ten. I mean, what quarter? I mean, yeah. third and ten's hard. And so, you know, it's a combination of all these things. We don't need major improvements. We need little improvements in all these areas on offense and defense, and, and we'll get this thing rolling. Boy, and another thing, uh, you know, through two games, you're not turning the football over. I mean, yep. that's not a problem. Last time you went to SIU, you had six turnovers. Yep. You had one turnover. It, it was tough because rarely are turnovers scoring plays. Right. That doesn't, especially fumbles are rarely scoring plays. Exactly. It just happened that way. But again, your your emphasis on limiting turnovers it has at least paid dividends. The first two games, you led the league in that category last year. Yeah, that's that's a, that's huge this week. Uh, got to do the same thing. They've done a good job of getting some turnovers, uh, but they've turned it over too. So we got to do a good job making sure we win that category. Okay, how about your offensive line? We saw Jake McCandless, uh, your center, the Iron Man of the team, 35 consecutive starts. He's the most veteran guy you got. Uh, it, you know, he has to lose a limb to come out of the game. He had to he had to limp off a couple of times in the game. How's he? He's doing well. Um, it was a really really physical game. Um, and our, our players are banged up as, as they should be uh, because of the how physical it was. But we came out of it fairly healthy. I don't anticipate anybody missing the game this weekend. So Tremaine McCullough out for the final seven and a half minutes. You think he'll be ready to go Saturday? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's hurt the preparation because he might have to miss some practice time. And so we got to find a way to get him ready where or maybe he's not practicing. Uh, both our linebackers have uh, are sick, have strep throat. So Terrence Hill and uh, Roper Garrett are not practicing today and so you know by the time we get to Saturday I expect to be at full strength but uh, we are nursing some things and it's that time of year it's kind of that grind you got all this academics and all all this stuff and uh, you know you gotta gotta handle it well and that's something that I don't think people uh, talk about a lot uh, we've got a two-year-old son he goes to daycare well he's got congestion and a fever this morning because you're around somebody gets strep throat boy there are precautions you have to take so guys because they're they operate yeah. so closely together they eat and drink together they're in the locker rooms together what what's protocol and something like that somebody gets strep throat you know you've yeah, got we, you probably got things that you do right yeah we treat them like a leopard like i don't want to get leave go be by yourself don't give someone else one and so uh that that's what's happening to them and then you know, and we talk a lot about washing your hands, all this stuff. You would be shocked at my daily notes about how to keep yourself healthy uh, through a season, you know, um, because in a locker room, all the sweat and all the, uh, the soap you use, uh, you know, there's just a lot to it. And I'm, I'm sure your wife probably instills that at home too. wash your hand. You, as soon as you walk in the door. Wash your hands. Yeah, and, and and I think she'd tell you I could do a little better job there. So she she's brainwashed our children that if they catch me uh, 
coming in the house from being on the road or something, I don't wash my hands. They call me out on it. So uh, she's done a good job. Kendall Donerson is going to join us, Coach. He's out of Maumelle, Arkansas, and that is near North Little Rock, Arkansas. So it's right uh, in that uh, you know metropolitan area of Little Rock, Southeast Scholar Athlete uh, at Southeast Missouri State. What can you tell us about Kendall Donerson, who has played in 25 games as a Red Hawk? Well, you know, he's from Arkansas. When I got here, we didn't have any players from Arkansas. And, and because of our location, that was a point of emphasis. And he was our first recruit out of Arkansas. You know, he, he thinks he's a basketball player. Ah. Well, he did. So he played hoops. And, and so we were recruiting him. And, and uh, the problem was he was never playing a lot of games because he kept getting technical fouls. So, like, every game he, he'd get into it and be, you know, he's a little too physical. Uh uh, you know, and he's a really strong kid and all that stuff. And coach, I don't know, you know, he gets a lot of physicals and, or a lot of technicals and basketball. I was like, buddy, I, I'm good with that. Like, that don't bother me a bit. You know, I'd rather tell a kid, whoa, than have to speed him up. And, and so uh, he got a technical foul at SEMO at Missouri. They teed him up. He got a, uh, <laughs> he got a, uh, a targeting. Yeah, right technical. Yeah. 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 Tee. So anyway, we we love him. He's he's got great parents, and um, you know, just super proud of him. And uh, he's got a beautiful smile, and you know, he's a little, he's shy. So that's one of the big reasons I brought him up here, so he can he come out of that a little bit, and hopefully, you guys get to meet the Kendall that I know. Well, the I know he is a guy that can rush the passer. Forty five quarterback sacks his last two years in high school. He had a sack and a half uh, Saturday against SIU. Had a quarterback sack last year against SIU. So he's a guy that can put pressure on the quarterback in addition to tackling guys. Yeah. And and he's so strong. He has a lot of our records on our team. And I almost told him to come in a, a, a t-shirt today. So everybody would think we're good. You know, at, when I see his arms, at least makes me sleep better at night. All right. We'll talk to him. Uh, Kendall Donerson, uh, Red Hawks linebacker will join us when we come back. We are at Wings, et cetera, in the Jackson location today. Stop on by if you've still got some time in your lunch hour. We're here in the banquet room. Just take a right when you walk in and you can enjoy the award winning Wings from Wings, et cetera, award winning the Southeast Missourians People's Choice Award winner for best wings in Southeast Missouri. Kendall Donerson joins us next. This is the Coaches Show on SEMO ESPN. Think about Wings Etc. See, Wings Etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings Etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc., They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just $6.49. Plus, Wings Etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59-cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings Etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. <laughs> and the whole community is excited about how Wings Etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings Etc. is a really big deal around here. Have you downloaded the SEMO ESPN app? Check it out. Check it out now. Free on the App Store or Google Play, and download today. Okay. Listen live to ESPN 92.9 FM or ESPN 12.8. AM 24 7 in crystal clear audio. Watch the Red Hawks Coaches Show live video webcast. Enter our contest. Get local weather and live radar. See what others are saying on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Everybody's downloading the free SEMO ESPN. The real question are you? Find it on the App Store or Google Play today. End of message. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local, local weather forecast. National Weather Service calling for sunshine about 88 today, tonight down to 67. A slight chance of rain tomorrow, tomorrow night with a high in the middle 80s. Small chance of rain on Thursday with a temperature about 84. Friday about a 40% chance of afternoon storms. Then storms likely Friday night through Saturday into Sunday morning with a high of 81 degrees. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast right here on the ESPN Radio Network. This is your local home for Mike and Mike, the sports huddle, and all your favorite team. Get it all right here makes my day go great. on the SEMO ESPN Sports Network. 
It's the Red Hawks Coaches Red Show Hawks. live from Wings, et cetera, in Jackson. Our, a one-week stay, just a quick flyby here through Jackson. We will be back in a Cape Girardeau location the next two weeks, so we hope that you will join us there. You still have time to get out here and join us for lunch, and they have terrific lunch specials here at Wings, et cetera. They've got daily half-pound lunch specials, as a matter of fact, and they start at just 6 49. They have food and drink specials throughout the week, including their 59 cent wings every Monday. And uh, mom and dad, they've got a kids friendly menu as well. Our daughters love the kids menu. They are open seven days a week. They're open late on the weekends because the games run late. It is wings, etc. And they're award winning wings, courtesy of the people who eat the wings. They voted wings, etc. Best wings in Southeast Missouri in the Southeast Missouri and People's Choice Award. Let's talk uh, football with Kendall Donerson, uh, Red Hawks linebacker out of, and now make sure I pronounce it right, Maumel, Arkansas, right? Yes, sir. Maumel now. Uh, how far, I know it's on the outskirts of, uh, of Little Rock. How long of a drive is it to get from Maumel to right in the middle of uh, Little Rock? Uh, probably like 20 minutes. Not really, but I mean, more like 10, I would yeah. say. So, Maumel, Arkansas, you went to Maumel High School, and you were telling me earlier, uh, I guess Maumel became a high school in 2011. Before that, it was uh, it was a different name, and Darren McFadden was actually there. Darren McFadden, who was an All-American at the uh, University of Arkansas and has been in the NFL with the uh, Oakland Raiders, uh, with the Dallas Cowboys, but he didn't actually go to Maumel, right? No, sir. How does that work? Well, it started at Oak Grove, which I went there for a year or so. And then everybody from Oak Grove moved to Marmel, which they built a high, new high school and everything. So they tried to make Darren Fenn sign off on a football field, but he wanted to keep the same name as Oak Grove, so he never did it. So Oak Grove was the high school. They decided, hey, it's just getting too old. We're going to have to build a new building. And then it became Maumel High School. Right. Well, how long? So, were you born and raised in Maumel? Yes, sir. What was it like growing up there? I mean, it's a little small town. Everybody there knows each other. You know, I had my friends and stuff. I always hung out with them. We always go play basketball, and then you know, nothing special about it. When did you decide that it was going to be football over basketball? Because Coach Tuke uh, seems to to think that you're a pretty strong basketball player. Well, my mom always told me that I was going to be a football player. She said. I don't think you're a basketball player because you never play any games because you're always getting kicked out. <laughs> so now we got to dig to the we got to dig to the bottom of this now. How come you got kicked out of so many basketball games? Well, it came from mostly football because after football season we went straight to basketball because basketball season was already started up. So I played in the, my first game my sophomore year, and after football season I, I went over there and I was still like in the football mode, so I was in there like almost tackling people in the game and elbowing people and just being dirty kind of. You know. So the officials were not excited when they were doing a mall Mel game. No, sir. So you're playing basketball. Uh, a lot of people who did that, uh, I did that. Uh, you go from football into basketball season. You can think you're in tremendous shape and you might be in great physical condition with football. Then you go out there and you have to run lines and you have to run gassers in basketball. It's a different type of shape. Football shape is different than basketball shape, isn't it? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Uh, my coach always made us do 75 and 5, which is you have to make 75 layups in a minute. And running up and down the court at the football was, like, very hard. So I had to, like, stand out for a while and stuff so, until I got back in basketball shape. All right, your best basketball story, one of your best basketball moments, maybe your best basketball game. What comes to mind? Maybe even a game you got kicked out of. Well, my best basketball game was my senior year when we was down two points, I think. Yeah, we was down two points, and the coach drew the play up for me to pass the ball to someone else to shoot because he's a good shooter. And they passed me the ball, and I took the shot at the free throw line, and I made it, which he was like, no, 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 don't shoot it, and I made it. So then he was like, good shot. So that was the no, no, yes, yes. It was a no, 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 yes, yes, yes after you made it. Yes, sir. Now, did you did you just make a decision, that's it, I'm not passing the ball, or was the guy not open, or you're saying, no, no, I can hit this shot? Well, my story behind that was my coach asked me why I didn't pass the ball to him, and I said, 
Well, I didn't think it was open, so I just shot it. So that's a good cover story. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. So how about uh, how about your best uh, time on the football field at Maumelle? I know the numbers that you put up were staggering. 220 tackles your last two years combined. 45 quarterback sacks. Is that a misprint? How would you get to the quarterback 45 times? Well, in our, in our high school, we played, like, small schools. So the lineman was, like, undersized. So I just used my speed, pass him, and then I get to go to bed. That had to feel pretty good to uh, to know that you could go into a football game and have the potential to dominate. Yes, sir. It was different. What, what was the biggest change when you go from high school football to guys who are going to be just as big, just as fast, and then when you're facing – some of these uh, linemen that you're dealing with that are probably bigger than a, a lot of the guys that you ever had to play against. What's the big transition for people to know about playing high school football and now you're playing Division One? Well, my freshman year, I got in my first game and I was rushing the passer. And my mom, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to just do what I did in high school, use my speed. And I got in the game, I used my speed, and I guess the linemen kicked back real fast. So I was like, what do I do now? So I just... Came running up here, and I tried to spin, and he grabbed me. And I threw me to the ground, basically. So I was like, I don't know what to do now. So I started working on my craft and stuff. Now I'm getting past him now. Boy, that's why you hear coaches like Coach Tuke and other coaches use the word technique. Boy, how much has your technique grown from that first time you tried to outrun a guy to the quarterback and it didn't work to now – where you're sacking guys multiple times in Division One games like you did in Carbondale. You got a sack and a half. Uh, they could have easily given you two sacks on the play because I think uh, that half sack, you were the first guy that got there. Yes, sir. Well, I just, I'm just glad my teammates got it. Either way it go, if they gave me a sack or not, I'm just glad that, I mean, we got them down most definitely. So, How about working on technique? And, and there are different moves and there are different things in terms of footwork, hand technique, things that you do. Uh, to get by linemen, uh, how, how important is it to not just rely on athletic ability, but to work on your craft and your technique? Well, my coach told me, Coach Sai and Coach Kuhn told me that I need to use my hands more because I used to always think speed, 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 which speed is a big part of pass rushing, but also you got to use your hands and your hips at the same time. Well, I think, uh, you know, even though Lawrence Taylor was really quick and really fast, if you watch some game film, from Lawrence Taylor, man, he's got a lot of technique. It's not just all athleticism. That's great to have that type of athleticism. But, man, the technique and the handwork that uh, Lawrence Taylor – were you ever a Lawrence Taylor fan? I really never watched him, but I heard of him a lot. My dad always told him about him, but I never really just watched So him. you only had the Razorbacks down there in Arkansas. There are no professional football teams down there. Do you root for a particular football team? Well, not really. I always go for the Razorbacks because they're a home team, which – I was – my uncle used to coach there, and then I was always uh, at the games and stuff. So, yeah, I used to root on the Razorbacks. Then my uncle moved to Ole Miss, so I started rooting on Ole Miss. So, I mean, I don't know. I do cheer for them because they're the home team. Well, uh, I know Houston Nutt was the coach at Arkansas when your uncle was on the staff there, and his brother Dickie Nutt was a basketball coach here, of course. And then he moved on to Ole Miss. Houston Nutt did. And now your your uncle is back coaching high school in Little Rock, right? He's a at Central. He's a defensive coordinator at Central. And he always takes me for every college football game I play in. And he makes sure that my grades are good. And he always staying on me like he, always, he used to. Now, as far as looking back at the SIU game, what were your thoughts on that one? I mean, individually, uh, you had a, a great game. Six tackles, four solos. Uh, a sack and a half for a loss of 12 yards. Uh, what were your thoughts? Because certainly uh, you guys uh, had stretches where the defense was really good and uh, they couldn't get in the end zone in the fourth quarter, the most important quarter. I think we played great as a team. I think we had a couple mistakes, but, you know, we get a fix this week and be ready to play against Indiana State. How about uh, the linebacking core that you play next to, Terrence Hill, uh, Roper Garrett, uh, you know, Roper Garrett, uh, I don't know where he's going to finish. He, he went into the game 13th on the all-time tackle list. Uh, if there's a tackle out there, it seems like 43's got his nose in there somewhere, right? Definitely, always. I mean, I love them guys. I mean, they always we all got our lockers together in the locker room. You know, we always talking and joking around. I think we more like a brotherhood now since I – I mean, since we've been here. Apparently, the lockers are too close together because Terrence and Roper both have strep throat together. Right. Yeah, so you're, you're kind of – Yeah, I'm in the middle of right in between both of them. So. 
How's your throat feeling? Good. 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 Good to hear. And and then Chad Meredith, man, what a what a great season he had a year ago, and he's having another good season. Uh, did you ever think you'd play with a linebacker who stands six feet five inches tall? I mean, you you never see a linebacker that tall. When I first got as a freshman, I, I asked him, did he play basketball? He was like, no, I play football. I was like, okay, well, I look up Chad as a big brother, you know, ever since I came here as a freshman. I always watch his technique and what he did. So now that I try to get on the field, I try to do exactly what he does. You know, I did a little research on uh, Marmel, Arkansas, and where it was. I think it's an interesting fact that people might want to know this about your hometown. You have what is called, uh, it, well, it's a pedestrian bridge. It's called the Big Dam Bridge, D-A-M. The Big Dam Bridge, 4,226 feet long, the second longest pedestrian bridge in the nation. Tell us about that thing. You ever been on that? Yeah, I've been there one time. My mom always go walk on it. Every time she tells me can walk, I tell her I'll, I'll be home later because I'm not trying to walk on the grid. <laughs> it's 1.2 miles long. So that that's probably – I bet uh, any time you go out there, people are jogging or walking on that thing, right? Always riding bikes and stuff. And I told my mom next time I go, I'll ride a bike and not walk. What's the best place to eat in Mall Mall? I eat Chinese food all the time, so I think Chinese places are the best. Yeah, so what's the what's the best Chinese place in Maumel? Uh Chinese Palace. Chinese Palace. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, Southeast plays a lot of basketball against Arkansas. They played there several times. Uh, that's over in Fayetteville, but they played them in Little Rock. In fact, uh, what you said the last time that they played the Razorbacks in Little Rock, you were at the game? Yes, sir. I kind of feel in between on that game because – Arkansas was recruiting me, and then they stopped. So I wanted Simo like to whoop them bad. So I was rooting for Simo. You know, we played football against them uh, in uh, in Fayetteville, and I think it seats at that time it seated about fifty six, uh, almost sixty thousand people. Uh, no, 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 close to eighty thousand people. Sorry, uh, and it was a sellout that day. And I had never seen in person. I know they call the hogs down there, but uh, they had Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, NFL guys, both in the same backfield. I mean, that was a really good Arkansas team. Uh, and they called the hogs 80,000 strong. I've never seen anything like that. What's that all about down there? I really don't know much about it, but I know they do call the hogs all the time. I got a couple of friends to go there. So I guess this they probably enjoy the hog call. My daughter, who went to that game, still has a little red hog nose with a rubber band yeah. around it. Do you see people wearing the hog yeah, noses? I used to have one of those. <laughs> you had a hog nose. All right. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Indiana State? Boy, you guys came within an eyelash of winning that game. They were top 25 last year. You had a pass in the air to Paul McRoberts in the end zone for a two-point conversion that would have won the game, and the ball just deflected off and out of bounds, and that was the end of the ball game. But uh, – uh, a good team from the same conference uh, as SIU. What are your thoughts on playing the Sycamores here for family weekend? Well, just ready for practice to see what we got planned for them. You know, I heard our defense was going to be like uh, normal, like what we do all the time. So just be prepared for that. Now we see you got a. It looks like maybe you're going bowling later. You got one of those uh, those bowling things on your on your wrist here. Everything good? Yes, sir. These are a little slight bruise. All right. Yes. Uh, what's it going to be like uh, getting back home and family weekend? Uh, how many of the Donerson family are coming? Well, my mom did probably like six people. All right. Now that's when it's family weekend and things like that. Then you have to scramble the pressures on for you to get tickets, right? Right. How's that work? Well, I was going to go sign and ask them for extra tickets and, so hopefully you give me some extra tickets. All right. So the, the Donaldsons will be in the house, uh, and hopefully we have a big crowd. Uh, oftentimes when we have uh, some of the Red Hawk players on, we, we see if they're on Twitter or on Snapchat so we can uh, maybe get some people that can follow you. Yeah, my Twitter name is Donaldson81, at Donaldson81. At Donaldson81, D-O-N-N-E-R-S-O-N, at Donaldson81. Right. And 81's your jersey number. Right. What do you think of the new jerseys this year? I love them. They're very tight. They're hard to get on, but as you get them on, they're good. All right. Uh, can't wait to see the new jerseys as you play your home opener on Saturday, 6 o'clock against Indiana State. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kendall Donerson. And by the way, he's got uh, he's got himself a, a pulled pork burger there that he is going to take with him on the road here from Wings, et cetera. Good luck to Kendall and the Red Hawks uh, at 6 o'clock on Saturday night.
against Indiana State. We'll talk about the Sycamores with Coach Tom Atukowitz when we return Red Hawks Coaches Show, Wings, etc. in Jackson on SEMO ESPN. The conversation has been growing about Wings, etc. See, Wings, etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings, etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings, etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings, etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just six forty-nine. Plus, Wings, etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including fifty-nine cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings, etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. And the whole community is excited about how Wings, etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings, etc. is a really big deal around here. Saturday night, the Red Hawks football team plays its home opener on Family Weekend against Indiana State at 6 o'clock on SEMO ESPN 92.9 and Rio Rock 99.3 FM. Red Hawks football presented by Moreland Pre-Owned Center on Seamers Drive in Cape by Southeast Health. When cost and quality matter, choose Southeast Health. By the Cape Girardeau Conservation Nature Center at Cape County Park North and by the Code family of dealerships in Cape and Anna, Illinois. Visit drivecode.com. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local, local weather forecast. National Weather Service calling for sunshine about 88 today, tonight down to 67. A slight chance of rain tomorrow, tomorrow night with a high in the middle 80s. Small chance of rain on Thursday with a temperature about 84. Friday, about a 40% chance of afternoon this storms. Not even on their and storms chart. likely not, Friday night through Saturday into Sunday morning with a high of 81 degrees. From a year ago. You're up to date oh, with year. the latest weather forecast. ESPN Radio Network. This is Mike Greenberg for the best in local sports talk and play-by-play. It's SEMO ESPN. Who's number 24? That's Kyler, guys. That's Welcome back. It is the Red Hawks Coaches Show. We're at Wings, etc. in Cape. Final segment here with Coach Took, who rejoins us. Boy, Kendall Donerson did a good job. Man, he's a he's a really good football player, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. He's got an awesome family and, um, you know, was raised well. And, uh, you know, we <clears throat> had to play him too early, uh, but uh, that's helped him get to the point now. You know, he's just a junior. Uh, same way with Chad, same way with Ford. Like, we, you know, a lot of those really good players on defense are just juniors. And six o'clock on Saturday, it'll be Indiana State. Uh, now they they hammered Butler in the opening game. They gave up twenty five points, forty one twenty five. Uh, I don't want to downgrade Butler, but it's a non scholarship program. They play in the Pioneer League, but so it's non scholarship. So that's you know that's their non division. Well, I guess technically they're FCS, but so they beat them week one. Then they go to Minnesota. Uh, they get handled. But the one thing that jumps out in the Minnesota game, Coach, uh, they scored four touchdowns against the Golden Gophers, and their first-year quarterback, Isaac Harker, three touchdown passes in that game. Yeah, I think that you hit it on the head. They were able to score some points against uh, Minnesota. Um, you know, their their D coordinator is a really good friend of mine, and and so we've talked about that, and uh, we'll have a work it out. It was a lot of big plays, and so that's a great opportunity for our defense to be challenged there and see if we can take that off the film this week. Well, it looks like they threw a wide receiver pass. Uh, one of their wide receivers, uh, Bob Pugh, throws a touchdown pass to the quarterback. So yeah. you'll, you'll be ready for that play. Yeah, and they they are definitely showing a lot of re- – they're, they're, they have a lot of trick plays. Okay. Last year they had two reverses. Uh, versus us in one game, that's that's pretty uncommon. Usually, you only see one, so I think that that's a little bit of their identity. It's a, it's interesting. They've got a lot of new faces. They have new personnel. Uh, neither one of their quarterbacks are back from last year. Now, Harker played at the he played in three games last year, uh, but he, he didn't really play a whole lot. Uh, this year, he is playing a lot and he's having a, a good season. Uh, five starters back on offense, six on defense. So they lost a few guys. Yeah. And so I think that's the thing, at least schematically, you know, we have uh, played them last year. So we know, we know a lot of the guys that are back. Uh, one of the biggest matchup issues is number 18. Uh, he's a, a six, five. You talk about Chad Meredith. 
uh, basically he looks like Chad out there running around catching balls. And he, he was able to catch some deep balls against our DBs last year. And so, uh, we got a, <clears throat> we have a good practice schedule. We got a guy that can mimic that, and we got to be able to, to to go up and and be physical at reception point, uh, so we don't give up those plays. He's an interesting guy. His name's Robert Tanyan. He came there as a quarterback. He was a quarterback. He played in eleven games as a quarterback his freshman year. Then they moved him to wide receiver, and he's ninth on their all time reception yardage list. I mean that's. That's pretty good to play a whole season at quarterback. They move you to wide out your top 10 all time in receiving yards. He must be really good. Yeah, he is. He's a, He's got a chance to, to get in a, a camp or something at the end of the year and uh, doing a really nice job for him. That, they don't have a lot of experience outside of that. Uh, Clayton Smith, their other wide receiver, did not play last year. James Mitchell, 83, zero career catches. Tariq Brown, zero career catches. And then Bob Pugh through the – touchdown pass to the quarterback so they don't have a lot of experience at receiver other than him other than him not to not to exactly say that right. they don't have good players there they still have a lot of experience yeah and and so i think it's uh you know a, a little bit of an unknown but uh certainly you you score uh you know that many touchdowns against the big 10 team is two and oh and uh, a pretty good minnesota team you know they got our attention both of the guards on the offensive line have started one game. So they, they've got a little inexperience there. Uh, the quarterback in his first year, redshirt sophomore. But uh, they are pretty experienced at running back. Roland Genesee last year over 500 yards. He was on the Missouri Valley newcomer team. Uh, and then they've got a guy who his name is Dimitri Taylor. Uh, he's already run for 96 yards, tore his ACL the second play of the year against Butler last year. So I think he was actually the starting running back, yeah. and now he's back. So they got two pretty good backs. Yeah, and and they played versus us, or he played versus us last year and did a nice job, and that's that tackling piece that uh, we're going to really focus on defense. And we were in position a lot with Isom, and he was able to, to break some of those tackles, and so that's a that's a big point of emphasis. Um, the the – Genesee, what's he weigh? Two, yeah, he's 225 pounds. Like, that's not normal. And so we got to do a really good job. All of our scout team backs this week will be bigger guys, and we can really work on uh, what we call drive for five. You know, once contact's made, you can't let your feet stop or you're, you're going to get embarrassed. Two years ago, uh, well, last year when you played them, they were top 25, and that's coming off a playoff year. They hadn't yeah. been to the playoffs since 1984. They went to the playoffs in 2014 and won a game. They beat Eastern Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Colonels in the Ohio Valley Conference. So, you know, they've had success under this coach, Mike Sanford, now in his fifth season uh, at Indiana State. Uh, what are you going to see from them on defense? Well, they're they're an odd front, a uh, so lot like what we play. And, and so they're, they're um, lots of blitzes and things. And uh, that's the, the, the thing we got to take off, fill, off the film is execution. And, and we can't have any pre-snap penalties. Um, we got to do a great job in the red zone of the of the touchdowns, and um, you know we got to throw the ball better. Those All right, are the three things, and and basically this is this is the team meeting I'm I'm going to talk to the team about. You need to talk to the weatherman too. It's not looking good no, on Saturday. No, 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 it's looking great. Okay, All I right. already talked to him yesterday. Good. That's all be we need. Best best day since we've had this year. All the rain will be out of here. You guys by six o'clock. Red Hawk walk. It's going to be clear. Cool fall weather, perfect for your little uh, barbecue tailgate. And, and speaking of the Red Hawk walk, that's at 4 o'clock, two hours prior. Yeah. For anybody right in front of Hawk Stadium there, the Red Hawk walk. And then, uh, you know, and it's been a, come a tradition since you have been here, if uh, there are young kids that want to run onto yeah. the field with the Red Hawks, they can do that, right? Yeah, show up the uh, before the game, and uh, I think that's a great experience. If you're if you're a ten year old, you'll really remember that. And I know uh, my oldest, Georgia, uh, takes part in that, and she gets excited about it also. All right, it'll be the Indiana State Sycamores. Uh, boy, you play an FBS school on the road, money game, and then two teams back to back from the number one conference in the country at FCS. Yeah, that's a tough way to, but it gets you ready for conference yeah, play, right? Yeah, I and mean, that's what we talked about. I mean, you know, it's all about the conference. Can we get to a point where we can compete for a championship in the conference? And so, although you know, as disappointing, we're glad that all the issues we had showed up, so we can get, get them fixed and uh, hopefully be a really good football team by the time we take on Murray. All right, it'll be at six o'clock uh, and Hawk Stadium, the first game at Hawk. 
is there anything new at Hawk that Red Hawk fans are going to see? Everything uh, status quo as last year? Anything new? Um, we're going to uh, – we got some new – on the, the visitor side, there's some new black uh, padding that has some graphics. It's Good. made it look sharp. And the word on the streets when we get the one uh, press box, a little press box painted by, uh, by Saturday. Um, but other than that, um, you know, just going to be a great – great uh, night for some football there's a lot of people that are excited about a program and looking for this day and uh, just want to make sure we do everything we can I give my team my best this week so that we can have a uh, you know our best outing Saturday word on the street is Bill Goshi got his car parked in the end zone in the tent up today so he's oh, ready yeah. Yeah, yeah he's ready and we're getting new tents I guess that is new and I guess you could put on uh, someone else here but you know in the end zone it's not going to look like a high school stadium anymore we'll you know Bill has this color and this, you know, you look down there and you're like, what the hell is that? We, we all look the same. It looks like a division one, uh, end zone and people, I think that's what makes this. That's one of the things that separates us from everybody else. Like where else in the country can you pull up and tailgate exactly right next to the field. And so now I, it feels like we're embracing it, making it a part of, of college game day. And, uh, just looking forward to seeing all those guys enjoying, college football and just remember that stupid rule you can't high five a player after a yes, touchdown yes and don't be have we got that change yet we need we to get should. that rule change well it's all the grown-ups you know they forgot what it's like to be young um but uh we need to make i mean sure even in the that, nfl yeah, i think it was goshi first of all yeah. was high fiving yeah. so we've already had we've already had talks about that and don't be lighting anything on fire so smoke comes in and we can't even kick a field goal or something. I mean, the NFL, they jump into the stands at Lambeau Field. They're hugging them, but you can't you can't slap a five. Got my own problem to worry about. I baby. understand. <laughs> Indiana State. Coach, we'll see you Saturday. Okay. Thanks so much Thanks. for the time. We appreciate it. <laughs> Coach Tom Atukowitz, and that'll do it for the Red Hawks Coaches Show. We hope you'll join us next week. We're back in the Cape location Tuesday at 12 noon. Rosillo and Cannell coming up next on ESPN Radio. Hope to see you at Hawk Stadium Saturday night. It's a 6 o'clock kickoff with the Sycamore. So long, everybody.